Wow, LEGO announced LEGO Movie 3 sets. Uh, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. The color scheme is kind of confusing. <laughs> Jokes aside, do you guys remember the pop-up party bus from LEGO Movie 2? That thing was cool and the color scheme rocked. And also the Sweet Mayhem's Sci-Star Starship. Same thing. I like the Bowie in the same regard because it's colorful and flavorful in colors and stuff. And let's all take a minute of silence to the discontinuation of the coral color. Anyway, we're not seeing the comeback of the coral color anytime soon. That was a cool color, but we have three new amazing sets for the next upcoming Marvel movie. We have Guardians of the Galaxy Headquarters, uh, 10 bucks. All of these are coming on April 1st, 23. That could be actually a poly bag, if you think about it. Only six, seven pieces. Then we have Baby Rocket's ship with Baby Rocket. Yes, sir. 35 bucks. Also April 1st, 330 pieces. And the flagship uh, called the New Guardians ship for some reason. I guess they just keep the actual licensed names away from the sets. There must be something behind it. But this one is called the Bowie. Yes, that is a nod and a tribute to David Bowie because Star-Lord really likes good old music. Not much to say about this one, except it is a polybag size build. Nothing too exciting. We have two stickers for the Guardian's headquarters interior, Star-Lord in his new outfit and Teenage Groot with Bowser's shoulders. I'm not sure why I'm calling this piece like that, but that's a cool little piece for his kind of spiky shoulders and just a workbench and a bunch of tools. So not even a much of excitement in terms of build. There is some sort of a misleading advertising because the lamp doesn't really shine unless we don't get a light brick in this one. So that's kind of weird that they used it. Maybe it's kind of like luminescent or something or glows in the dark. I think not, it's just a normal barrel piece. So I'm not sure why, what's up with that effect. The set is really tiny. You can probably build this just by looking at this rotation 3D piece. And I'm really trying hard to look into the description if there is anything to say about that light effect on the box. No, we don't get a, a train light system or anything like it. That would, of course, not be available in a $10 set. But yeah, it's, it's kind of weird that, you know, just a normal piece like that. It's just a translucent barrel, but the box shows it's glowing and the this event shot shows it's kind of glowing. So I don't like when LEGO does that. However, the print for Star-Lord is amazing. That same print is repeated in the flagship set as the whole crew is there with the same outfit. Really awesome with the belt and the uh, logo of their new team. A lot of details there. There's toe printing as well. There is no arm printing, but overall I really like it. And Groot is just Groot. And for some reason now they also do green screen uh, lifestyle shots. What's that for? Is that to add SFX because it's a Marvel movie, MCU, all the CGI? I don't know. It, it's weird. First time I've seen that. Moving on, Baby Rocket's ship. So tell me what's going on here. Maybe somebody knows the lore better. Why do we get uh, actual Rocket and Baby Rocket? Is there some sort of time travel involved? Is that a clone? What is going on? I want to see the movie right now to find out. Still, the introduction of a baby raccoon mold is kind of cool. Maybe you're gonna see actual baby raccoons in LEGO City sets or some animal sets in the future. Cool, thanks LEGO. Now, this thing reminds me maybe of something Star Wars-y that would appear maybe in a Han Solo movie, you know, or maybe Rogue One. I don't know, some sort of like a utility vehicle uh, turned a combat vehicle by Rocket because Rocket likes things to weaponize them and uh, likes to weaponize things and make them go boom. So I guess that's what happened here. And also in that pose, it kind of reminds me of the Lego Batman movie Scuttler. Remember that thing? That was ridiculous. So kind of like landed, looks like a mech, but flying looks like a, I don't know, like a mining utility vehicle. Again, weaponized by Rocket. And also something I noticed, the color of the front shield kind of gives me that Space Police vibes, that dark translucent green. I like that. I really like this one. I think it's going to be quite popular uh, at 35 bucks, quite affordable. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people just getting it for that um, baby Groot. Sorry, baby Rocket for sure. All right, on to the flagship, the Lego Movie 2.5 Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, the Bowie from David Bowie. Anyway, no, there is no coral here, but really that uh, teal color uh, combination with a little bit of a purple reminds me of uh, Lego Movie 2 vibe for some reason. That's the first thing I noticed when I saw these pictures. We do get a stand. I think that is the same stand design that we got for the XL15. 
similar to what we got with the Benatar previously. However, the Benatar was cooler because it was rotating. I mean, the thing was awesome. All the rotation, no changing angles. So I'm just looking at the stern right now. It is actually beefier because of the size and the weight of the ship. That thing was 160 bucks initially. So this one is 100. You know, not a significant difference. So of course the stand will be smaller. Uh, and this one also did not have any tilting or any kind of angling of the ship. But the rotation was super cool. So you could like, display it in more of an attack angle or more like a climb angle. Pretty cool. Also, the Benatar seemed to be at a little better scale, as I said. This thing is huge. Look at this thing from the screenshot of the trailer. Uh, the set itself is not as substantial, so that's something to take note of. We get Star-Lord, Drax, Nebula, Mantis and Adam Warlock, or uh, should I say the new Mr. Gold. <laughs> no, seriously, amazing minifigure, love the gold finish, lots of printing, no arms printed, but I think that might be one of the very few occasions we actually get a golden arms for a minifigure and a golden head at that same thing and golden hair mold as well. Wow, <laughs> I didn't notice that. Uh, wow, it's gonna be a very, very sought after minifigure for sure. The ship will have tons of compartments to hide crew's weapons and also you're gonna be able to detach those triangular thingies on both sides in the front of the ship to get your crew into some sort of like a glider or a mini agile attack craft, whatever that's gonna be. We're gonna have to watch the movie to find out. I did like the Benatar more for sure, but this thing at 100, not too shabby, very unique design and great display too. Plaque is missing, which I noted on my Benatar review in the past that for such a set, a plaque would be really amazing to have. But again, there is not much information that technicalities that you can actually add there. There is not much in the lore to say about these ships, except that they just look cool. And I believe that with this one's design, it's gonna find its way to fans' hearts. It's just unique. Those two giant rings in the back, whatever their purpose may be. The color scheme with a lot of teal usage. Just overall cool asymmetric look of a ship. And also that space police node, as I mentioned, the windshield is dark, translucent red. And really last time I remember this being used is space police. Yeah, I'm, I'm that old. <laughs> solid, solid. I would say with such a kind of a line of Marvel coming in, I see brightness in the upcoming uh, whatever Lego might bring in the superhero sets. I think there is a lot of also a word uh, in the community that the, the DC line this year will be quite awesome. So I'm looking forward to that because DC wasn't getting as much love from Lego as Marvel did, even though uh, Marvel also didn't get a lot of sets. There, was, there were some flagships, there were some, you know, some really good ones, uh, some unnecessary ones like the Hulkbuster. <laughs> I would prefer having sets like these obviously in place of a Hulkbuster, you know, for a one $500 Hulkbuster, you can get a bunch of $100 good sets like the Bowie. Uh, I would prefer that because it's just more affordable for most people to get into that stuff. And uh, usually the minifigures are fantastic too. And you don't feel like you're overpaying for getting into Marvel and that license tax doesn't hit you as much. Man, that Hulkbuster will haunt me for for ages, like I don't know how people actually bought this set. It's cool, it's big and bulky, but man, it's expensive and somewhat unnecessary. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about these new sets. Uh, I think it's a great entry to the Guardians of the uh, Galaxy 3 uh, franchise. I mean, that the, these sets were always amazing, so they kind of keep it up. Uh, Lego keeps it up with this one. Uh, again, Benatar remains my favorite from the entire line of Lego Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy, but the Bowie might uh, be in my basket when it comes out. Again, April 1st, these guys come out. Uh, so not too far from now. So let's see and wait. And uh, hopefully the movie will be good because that's going to be the last installment of my favorite crew in Marvel and uh, my favorite just overall lore uh, that MCU uh, provided so far. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed what I had to say here, check out other videos as well because uh, I do a lot of blabbering about Lego and stuff like that. Check me out on Twitch because I stream now again. And well, thank you so much for watching. It was Mike and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Goodbye.